Okay, now let's talk about the types of stress. The types, I just remember that, the types of stresses. So what we did last time was normal and tensile and compressive. Now, what you should realize here is if you look at this area, the load is perpendicular to that area. That's important. For our normal stress, which is called like this, the area has to be normal to my load. Normal means um, perpendicular. So if this, I'm looking at it from the side, this is an area. It is 2D, so if I turn it on its side, it's a square, but I'm looking at it from the side so I don't see a line. Well, then my load has to be perpendicular to that, a 90 degree angle to it. Okay? That's important. That's when I got normal stress. But you don't see that all the time. Sometimes you see a different type of stress. Like right here. Maybe this block is glued to the plank underneath it. We put some glue, we stuck it on there, and we start pulling. Well, you are trying to shear that glue off. Like you're just you're pulling as hard as you can. It's trying to cut the glue off. And that does develop a stress right there on that surface. It develops a stress. But this stress is applied to an area that's not perpendicular. This area right here is parallel to my force. And so this brings us to a different type of stress. It's called shear stress. Okay? Shear stress. You see it with glue blocks. You see it whenever you're trying to cut something. Okay? If you're trying to cut something, um, you are shearing it. That's why scissors are sometimes referred to as shears, okay? The force that's being applied trying to cut the material is parallel to the cut plane. Now, luckily for you, shear stress has the exact same equation, okay? This is a tau right here. It's like a little t. And it's equal to load over area, but area this time is not perpendicular to my load. It is parallel to my load. It is always the surface that suddenly becomes visible if you manage to cut what you're trying to cut, okay? That's important, remember that. This is the surface that becomes visible if you manage to cut what you're trying to cut. So if I have, you know, two plates and I've got a bolt going through them and I am pulling really hard on those plates, well, when that bolt finally snaps, I'm gonna be looking at the cross section of that bolt, a circular cross section and that would be my area. Here's the bolt, you know, half of it's over here. And this is the other half, I'm kind of looking at it. This is what got cut off there. So that would be my area. And whatever this force is, that would be my load. Um, sometimes when it comes to shear, they use the letter V, which is incredibly confusing. Most people start thinking that's volume, and it's not. So if you see a V, it's just shear force and many classes, including my solid mechanics class, do use V for shear force. So just letting you know that that happens. Okay, so shear stress is from a force that is trying to cut something like this, where it's trying to break the glue and break these two parts like you're cutting it right here. It's not trying to elongate something, it is trying to cut it. Other ways that can be happen is like if you have like a rubber block, it's shear stress is also trying to change the shape of the cross section. Like if I start applying a force on that surface right there, well, it's gonna cause that block to deform. And that is caused by shear stress, okay? It's caused by shear stress. It is deforming that block. Um, you see that sometimes with um, dampers, like you have a machine, you wanna attach it to your table, but you don't want that machine to cause the table to rattle. You'll use these rubber blocks with a little like U-shaped bracket and this is clamped to your table and this is clamped to your machine. And you have these rubber blocks right here that are then damping it out. And when you put weight on them, well, that weight is parallel to these surfaces and it changes the shape of the little U blocks to an angle. And it protects your table from being all shaken up. Okay, that's enough for this time. Next time we're gonna jump into an example using shear stress. So thank you for listening. Um, if you need more examples, there are literally 20 of them, so check them out, and I hope they help you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.